All right, here we go. Let's start with number one. I already went through that yesterday on the review. Again, yes, this is an inscribed, this is a right angle, but it asks again for the angle to be inscribed, and that's not an inscribed angle. That's an angle formed by a chord and a tangent, so that's why the answer was choice two. Angle DCB is a right angle, inscribed angle drawn to a semicircle. Okay, here we go. Number two, God, second quiz in a row. It breaks my heart here. Read the darn question. Read the darn question. Yeah, okay, that's 70. I get it. You doubled it and you got arc BC. Uh, I'm looking for arc AC. All right, I'm looking for arc AC there, not BC. So again, this was a BOA was a diameter. So if that's 140, arc AC had to be 40. All right. Okay, moving on to the second page. Uh, number five in particular. Okay, I had many people say that the triangles were congruent. Okay, then tell me the method then. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side. You're not going to find you're not going to find any sides congruent up here. You did have the vertical angles. Here you go. You did have the vertical angles. These are not radii. All right. There's circle O. There's the center. This, these are not radii, so they're not congruent. What type of angles are A and B? Inscribed, and they're both going to which arc? Same arc. Let me repeat again. There are no sides congruent up here. None. You do have a, two pairs of angles now. So you do have angle angle, so it doesn't make them congruent. It makes them similar. All right, you have no pair. You guys that chose CA congruent to DB, those arcs, you'd have to know the chords are congruent. And again, I know no sides are congruent up here. Okay, everyone all right with that one? All right, we got some work to do with these big circle questions here now. So let's go to six. One forty arc AE is one thirty. Uh, AB to BC is six to four, so I can put six X and four X there. Uh, what was the measure? Here we go. I'm asking everybody here. What was the measure of arc ABC? One hundred forty degrees. And what do I have on arcs ABC right now? Six X and four X. So they add up to ten X. And what was the measure of arc ABC? 140. So there's the equation I could start with. So this ended up being 14. And go back. If you need your calculator, use it. If, if Maybe if you got it right. Go back. 6 times 14 would have gave me 84 for this one. And 4 times 14 would have given me 56 for this arc. All right, we have the ability to find some of the other arcs now. This is a what right here, AOD. Diameter, what's a half circle measure? That's 130, this part's gotta be 50. All right, again, same thing. This arc right here will measure 180 degrees and I already have 84 and 56, so C, C to D's gotta be? It's gonna be 40 degrees. So I've already answered part A, that was 50 degrees. Everyone all right where I got these arcs from? Okay, arc AB, already labeled, 84 degrees, done. Okay, part C, angle BAD. I'm gonna turn to you guys for this because this is making me nervous for Friday. Six, BAD, inside or outside? Yep. Inside, is it a central angle? Is it inscribed? Okay, inscribe, what's the rule for an inscribed angle? You take half of the arc. Everybody take a look where BAD is drawn to. Name the arc it's drawn to. BCD, which totals how many degrees? 96 degrees, so you're taking half of 96, and that one ended up being 48 degrees for BAD. 
Okay, angle APE. Inside or outside, number four, inside or outside, APE. It is outside the circle. Discussion, it was over. You're going to subtract two arcs now. Uh, let me do this one. Actually, let me get rid of the pink here. Let me go green for you. APE, ready? A, P, E. Everyone see the arcs that are in between them? Everyone see the arcs? Name them. How many degrees are in the arcs? Two. How many degrees are in the arcs? Yep, and there you go. Subtract those two. You guys end up with half a 74, which ends up being 37 degrees. Not yet, nothing different than what we've done in class. Nothing here. EFD. Okay, now we came to a little sticking point with EFD. Inside or outside? Number 12. Inside or outside? EFD. Inside. Is it a central? Is it inscribed? So it's got to be a floater angle, which I know I'm going to take one half the sum of two arcs now. EFD, what arc belongs to EFD? 50, right? Plus, now, be careful, it's vertical angles arc. 84 and 56, give me, was that 140? Yep. So you're going to take half of 190, which ends up being 95 degrees. That was a commonly missed one right there. 95 degrees. All right, so hey, take a look up here. I saw a lot of this on the diagram. That's gotta be a right angle. How? How? What's the theorem? Radius drawn to where is perpendicular. Radius drawn to? Point it, so name the right angle up here. It's not PFA. It's gonna be P D, F, or P, D, A, this one right there is a right angle. That's the only right angle you knew is right there. All right, that was it. We okay there? Everyone see seven? This is your packet that I'm showing to you right now. Okay, I'm just trying to make a point that you just can't, you gotta look back at your notes sometimes. Okay, you gotta look back at your notes sometimes to what we did in class, all right? I can give you 54 big circle problems, but sometimes that's not gonna cut it. All right, you gotta look back at your notes. Two tangents drawn the same external point, congruent, 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 congruent. Okay. Whew. All right, you ready to buckle up here? All right, let's do it. I told you this angle right here, BAC, was 40. What type of angle? Well, first, let me just deal with that. What type of angle is that? Inscribed. So I took half its arc. So what arc up here should be 80? B to E to C. 80, yep. Yep. There's 80 degrees. There is the answer to part A. Also, it said, I cut it off, and I'm not going to move it. It also said that... A, B, and A, C were congruent. Okay, ready? Somebody identify what A, B, and A, C are in that diagram. 15, what are A, B, and A, C? A, B is a what? A, C is a what? Chords. Guys, two chords are congruent, meaning two arcs are congruent. Yep. 
specifically which arcs in this diagram. Which arc belongs to AB, which arc belongs to AC. I kind of just gave that away, but 17, which arcs now should be congruent? AB congruent to AC going this way. Hey, 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 hey! Isn't this the rest of the circle? 360 minus 80, what do you got for me here? Let's go, I, that's why I asked for the calculators out here. 360 minus 80. 280, these two arcs have just been determined congruent. So each one is 140, 140. Oh, what do I have here? BOD, what's that sucker? That's a diameter. All right, let's get more specific here. What's gotta be AD then? Half circle, half circle, 40. Oh, this whole arc was 140, so what's D to C? Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. I got another diameter here, AOE. That's 140, what's the rest of it then? 40, that whole arc was 80, so this piece is gonna be. Okay, so I have all arcs labeled now. No excuses for anybody now. All arcs are labeled. Angle ABD. Where am I? Here, A, B, D. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've seen that angle before. 20, inside or outside, A, B, D. Central? Inscribed. Okay, how do I find an inscribed angle? What arc is A, B, D drawn to? We good so far? How about D, O, E? Six, inside or outside, DOE? What? DOE, inside or outside? Inside, central angle? Okay, what do we know about a central angle? Always? It's congruent to its arc. Everyone take a look. What arc is DOE drawn to? More than DC. DCE, so it's equal to? Buck 40. We're moving, here we go, angle P. Where is it? Okay, it's outside, good. 18, it's outside, how do I find any angle outside? Okay, let's find out where we are now. Let me highlight this bad boy, ready? Boom, everyone see the arcs that are in between it? What is the measure of the major arc that's in between it? 140, and what about the minor arc? Okay, got it. So this will be, what do we end up with, 30 here? No. Oh, that ends up being 60, yeah, 30. And finally, A to C to P. This one was a tougher one. Let me get all these beautiful colors out of here. Everyone take a look, A to C to P. Where it happened, A to C, oh, right here. What's this one right here? What's this, AC? AC's A, chord, and this is A? Tangent, we have a rule for that. That is, take half of the arc. Everyone see the arc that's in between that angle? How large is it? How all are, here you go, from here. What's the arc in between? I got a 140 and I got another 80. So half of 220, 110. There it is. All right, questions? For I, and I'm still, I still have an issue with nine. I'll get to it in a second. Uh, for eight, another one coming Friday. All right, there will be one more big circle we put on there on Friday's quiz. All right, uh, here's the issue I have with nine. What happens when you draw a radius to a point of tangency? It's perpendicular, forms a right angle. Name a leg on that right triangle. 12 squared, name another leg. R squared, name the hypotenuse. It's 
not 30, 60, 45, 45. R12, R plus four, right there. I'm just trying to make a point, guys. You gotta start looking back at stuff, especially when you're struggling. All right. And this, oh, oh boy. Not R squared plus 16. Okay. Not R squared plus 16. Anything else I didn't go over? I know I most went over most of them, but. Yep, Mike. Um, can you just go over how you got the equation? Or rather, for the model? number four, radius of a wheel, how much distance will it cover in approximately 10 revolutions? Sure. Well, after, here you go. Let's say it starts here and does one revolution. What did I just highlight? I highlighted the outside of the circle, which is the circumference. So I find, I find the circumference, which was pi times, the radius was 2.15, so the diameter is gonna be 4.3. So whatever, whatever 4.30 times pi is, that's how many feet, how many meters it goes in one revolution, right? So I am actually gonna multiply this by 10 because it's going to go 10 times around. Okay. All good. All right. Again, from this quiz anyway, I'm going to, there's one big circle question on Friday's quiz. One more big circle question. All right. Let's skip over to uh, the homework. You guys had writing equations of circles, graphing a couple of them as well. Let's see how that turned out. Where are we going? What are we looking for? Any of these we want to go over? Or are they too easy? Heaven? 26, sure. Okay, we can take a look at the whole thing. And I'm glad Heaven picked this one because it gives me the opportunity to tell you, yes, uh, on Friday's quiz, you're going to get something that looks like this. And where you have to, I'm going to call it a quiz because it does not cover the entire unit. So I'm calling it a quiz. All right, I will have you turn it into circle equation by completing the square. All right, so first thing you want me to do, I'm going to turn this over to you guys. First thing you want me to do to turn this into the circle equation. Two, first thing you want me to do. How do I turn this into the circle equation by completing the square? What do you mean by move it? I don't want to move it to the other side. I want to group them together, yes. So x squared minus 16x plus y squared equals zero. All right, yesterday I said you're gonna to have to complete the square twice, but that's incorrect here because if you just see y squared, what did we say yesterday? What's the coordinate? So it's gonna be the center, I at least know the center is gonna be something comma zero. When I just see y squared hanging out there by itself, I know it's that coordinate zero. So help me complete the square for the x's then. What's my new C value I'm going to add on here, and how do you find it? What's the new C value? Here we go, 14. It is 64. How'd you get 64? Half a negative 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared, 64. Got it? And make sure whatever you add to the left, you add 
to the right. Don't forget about that. Don't forget about that common mistake. Keep the equation balanced. What do you end up putting in here now? Here you go, 14 again. What do I end up putting in here? Yep, half your B value goes in there. Plus Y squared equals 64. Now that's the circle equation. Based off of this, what, oh, I already wrote it up there. What is the center now? What comma zero? Here you go, 15, what comma zero? Eight comma zero. Radius length now is not 64. My radius would end up being seven, eight. Is it the radius issue? Is that why you couldn't graph it? Okay. So now I go to eight, zero, and I go up eight, left eight, whatever, throw my compass on, swing around. Well, I don't know. Well, 26 was just done. And I at least wanted to go over another completing the square, so. Anything else from the homework here? So again, I am, yes, I am going to ask you to complete the square on Friday's quiz. Anything else going? All right, can I see what you did? See your graphs? And then uh, we can get your compass fired up because we got to go through our last constructions of the year here. You got it. Quick reminder before we begin. Tonight, if you're sitting home, I don't know how to do, I forgot how we did this in class. Okay, that's great. Go on Aspen. Remember our Regents Review folder that's got the link to all the constructions. The ones I do today are there as well. All right. Second thing, because it is all constructions tonight, you will not see an answer key up on Aspen. All right. So just keep that in mind. So tonight, if you forget the steps, go under the Regents Review folder and look at the uh, YouTube link there. All right. So here we go. Constructions with circles, our last constructions of the year. First one, how do I make a tangent line? Okay. Going through a point. All right, how do I make a tangent line? We're actually going to use one of the theorems right now to help us out. All right. So you guys know I wouldn't do this right now. Don't do this. I'm just going to, I need something that looks like that, right, at the end with my compass. Uh, what theorem have we gone We've gone over two that involve tangents. What one looks like I might be able to apply here, Sean? Okay, so what you're telling me, and here's what I need everybody to do right now, is, yeah, draw on a radii to point P. Because when our tangent comes in, those two are going to be what? Perpendicular. So here's my question to you, because the answer is going to be yes. Do you know already how to make a line perpendicular to another one going through a specific point? And the answer is yes. All right. You're going to take your compass, we're going to put it on point P. Now you're going to have to do something with your radii, but what's your goal right now? To make an arc that intersects twice, right? So yes, we're going to have to extend that radii we originally had there. You are making a perpendicular line to your radii. And that guarantees me that line has to be tangent. So again, put your compass point on P. And we're going to make an arc that intersects it twice. And as you guys know, I can open it up or close it from there. But from here, I'm going to go to these two points of intersection and make two more arcs that hopefully intersect each other. And then you have your tangent line. Again, I'm guaranteeing this has to be tangent because it's perpendicular to the radius. There it is. Not too bad. I just use the theorem radius perpendicular to the point of tangency. Any issues with you guys? 
We going? We all right? We right. Can I move on or are we still working here a little bit? All right, next up, how do I get a square inside a circle? All right, how do I get a square inside a circle? Before we start, what's inscribed mean again? I know inside. Meaning, can I, is that inscribed? All four vertices have to touch, right? Okay, okay, I got you. All four vertices have to touch. And what do you know about the sides of a square there, ladies, gentlemen? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm thinking this through with you. They're all congruent. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just, I'm just at this point. They're all con What are these in the circle? What are the sides representing in the circle? These are for what in the circle? Chords. And if the chords are congruent, so is there any way that I can make four congruent arcs? That's my goal. Because if you can make four congruent arcs, you'll have four congruent chords. Well, let me ask you this. Can you make two congruent arcs? Let's start there. Let's build up the four. How can I make two congruent arcs? Draw in a. Go ahead. Let's go. Draw in a diameter, right? That'll make two congruent arcs. I don't care how you do it. There's not one and only one correct way. So there's two congruent arcs. Suggestions on how I make that into four. Oh, make another. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Make another one. I don't think so. That's not going to fly. So basically, what are you telling me to do to your diameter you just drew in? Bisect it. Yes. Bisect it. I have shown you nothing new today yet. All right, nothing new. You to open up your compass more than half the length. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully it goes through T. If it is a diameter, hopefully it goes through T. Do you have four congruent arcs? Can you draw on their chords now? Where would I draw my chords? Ready? Here's one side of the square. Second side. Third side. And finish it off. I am. I know all four sides are congruent because the four arcs were congruent. And if the arcs are congruent, so are the chords. There is your square inside a circle. Measure up, Sean. Just checking. Okay. My method worked. Yep. Now you go to each point. Two more up top should line up with me. Okay. All good. You ready to up the ante now? You ready to up it? Because now I'm going from a square to a hexagon. All right. So help me out here. I'm going from four sides to six, which now means I need how many congruent arcs? Six. Whoa, whoa. How do I cut it up into six congruent art? Whoa, whoa, that's, oh, yikes. Draw on a radii, go ahead, draw on a radii. Pick a point on the circle right now. This is how we're gonna get six congruent arcs. Go ahead, draw on your radii. Do you guys, we've just, I think we discussed, I'm pretty sure we have. How many radii fit around the circle? Six. six and a little more, right? So can you get me six congruent arcs? Yeah. You, 
if six of these fit around the circle, you can get me six congruent arcs. Measure with your compass the length of the radius. Everyone got the length of the radius with your compass. Okay, now make sure your comp if it's not already, put your compass point on the point you put on the circle. And we're going to make six radii around the circle. Ready? Here comes the first one. Boom, right here. Just going to make a little mark right there. There's one. Move it down. Because you know six of these are going to fit on there. And if my opening of my compass never changes, those arcs have to be the same measure. Keep going. We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six arcs. And just like the square, how are we going to make the hexagon? And if you're unsure, you can take your compass and measure all the sides. How's everybody doing? So I don't, I don't really want to give away the, the last one. Everyone okay with the hexagon? You have six congruent arcs up here, right? How many congruent arcs? Okay. Because what am I asking you to do next? So that means how many congruent arcs? Yike. I give up, huh? I give up. Three congruent, there's no way I'm splitting that circle into equal parts of three. Do a hexagon. Uh, laugh as we may, she's on to something. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna touching the. I'm not splitting the hexagon in half. No, guys. How many equal arcs did we have for the hexagon? Six. And how many do we need for an equilateral triangle? Three. So oh, hold on. Let me go back to my diagram here of the hexagon. How can I make this six into three equal arcs now? Add those two. Remember, all six are congruent, right? So this arc has to be congruent to this one, congruent, because they're all the same measure, right? So I'm going to do a hexagon, but now I'm not going to connect every one. I'm going to connect every other one, OK? So I'm going to draw my radius in. Make my six congruent arcs around.
Okay, everybody good with the equal at so you get it from the heck you get it from the hexagon. And here, just a last thing, just to show you how the numbers work as well. You broke this up into three congruent arcs, right? All they all total what? 360, right? If I broke it up into three congruent arcs, how much is each arc measure? 120. 120. Watch, ready? What type of angle is this one, or any of the angles in the triangle? What do we call those types of angles? Inscribed, how do you find any inscribed angle? Half the arc, what's half of 120? There you go, you know any equilateral triangle, it's gotta be 60, 60, 60, right? All right. Questions? I don't think it was too bad. Again, if you forget tonight, just pop on the vid either this video or the one I put on the region in the Regents Review folder. All right, it's all constructions tonight. Tomorrow's the last day of the unit and it's all gonna be some uh, proof stuff.